Okay, we are going to get started with the ARC presenting IEP overview. And we are very excited to learn what you guys have to teach us. So yeah, go ahead nice and be here. Yeah, and go. Us. Good afternoon. My name is Layla Abdi. I'm South Sweden here. So I am my new intern will be co-hosting our new presentation for that. So in regards to IEP overview education. My name is Cameron. Um, I am a new intern under Layla here. Um, and currently I'm a student um, speech language pathology major. So um, I'm heading there and just I'm excited to be here and learn more. So yes, yes. we go ahead and get started on the first slide. So sensory access for IP. Um, so please use the space you are in as you need or prefer. Um, communication through your body, voice, or other methods. Um, closing your eyes and a little straw, doodle, right, or fidget. So here, the mission for the Arc Minnesota is to promote and protect the rights of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, to support full inclusion and participation in communities. Values here at the Arc Minnesota include human and civil rights, self-advocacy and self-direction, equity and belonging, disability and racial justice, as well as on the bottom, we have the Arc Minnesota Strategic Plan and Value Framework. So today we will discuss special education services, in particular individualized education programs. We will talk about how the IEP process works and highlight what families need to know when navigating the process. What is pre-referral? So pre-referral is when students must be given the opportunity to be successful within the general education program. It's prior that to being referred to special education services within the schools they attend. Schools must implement and document at least one, at least two instructional strategies alternatives or interventions. These two referrals and interventions must be given ample time to be successful, but may not be used to unduly delay such education evaluation if unsuccessful. So how does someone qualify for an IEP? This is usually through a referral or a request for evaluation. The child find mandate is states are responsible for finding, locating, and evaluating all students with disabilities who need special education and related services. A school professional may ask that the child be evaluated to see if they have a disability, but parents can also contact the child's teacher or other school professionals to ask that their child be evaluated. Technically, this request can be verbal, but the only way for parents to ensure that there's no miscommunication about what is being requested or when is to do so in writing. Parental consent is needed before the child can be evaluated, um, and the evaluation needs to be completed within a reasonable time after the parent does get consent. What to know before an evaluation? There should be a pre-evaluation in-person meeting. This meeting must be documented. At the pre-evaluation meeting, school personnel should, be, should explain to the parents why each test is relevant to the child's needs, how it will be administered and to whom parents have the right to request specific evaluations or, evalu evaluations or evaluations targeting specific areas of concern where they see the child might be struggling. Schools do need to provide all requested evaluations. They do need to tell you what they are denying your request. Parents should request all denials and the reasons for any denials must be put in writing. So what is the evaluation process to receive special education? So there must be have must have great consent from parents prior to beginning any evaluations or formal observe, observations. If you're eligible for special education services, they must fit disability criteria set forth by IDEA, specific disability categories. How soon should the evaluation be conducted? As soon as possible, whenever the parents request it, after receiving more parents of consent. Children from ages zero to three will take within 45 days. Children over, children over three years old should take within 30 school dates. All right, your, your child qualifies for special education. Now what? The cornerstone of special education services is the IEP. 
individualized education plan of fourth program. Um, some common questions we will be answering are what is the IEP? When should my child get an IEP? What is the IEP meeting? Who's involved in the process? What if I don't agree with my child's IEP? How often is it reviewed? And who can help me advocate for my child? So jumping right in, what is the IEP? The IEP document states the individual student goals for that year, including the support services, assistive technology, and curriculum modifications that must be provided, as well as their class placement. It's required under the Federal Special Education Law, IDEA, which stands for Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. For each child with a disability who requires special education, your public school district and area education agency have the responsibility to provide a free and appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. The least restrictive environment means your child will attend classes, participate in non-academic and extracurricular activities, and receive services with children who do not have disabilities to the maximum extent appropriate. FAPE and least restrictive environment for your child are protected rights are protected by rights that you have as parents and assure that you have an important role in planning and decision making for your child. FAPE doesn't mean the same thing for everyone. It don't, doesn't always mean that the student's going to get straight A's or that they're going to have one to one support, but it does mean that one special education services are provided at no cost to the parent, although you may be charged for the same general education fees that other parents are, such as fees for extracurricular activities or lab fees. And two, your child's services must be specific to your child's needs and provide educational benefit, which is progressing towards their specific goals, having access to and pro progressing in the general education curriculum, and inclusion in the same activities and settings as children who do not have disabilities. The IEP must be reviewed at least once per year with the whole IEP team present, and um, parents can request to meet more than just the one required meeting. And sometimes if parents, you know, don't feel comfortable with the IEP, well, as Cameron said, there could be more than one meeting taking place, or just to make sure that the parent and child feel comfortable for the plan. So who is on the IEP team? Required IEP team members are who? The parent, the parents, the legal guardian of the child, the child of itself, over 14, uh, special education teachers, regular education teachers, administrators of the school, Anyone else that's a parent, student request, advocate, family members that are present within the IP meeting itself. So we have this picture right here where we have a parent and a child and the school and the administration team. And we clearly see that the parent, the child, the school administration team are on number. What does that mean? Well, it means that sometimes like parent can feel stressed, worry, feeling like they're not, nobody's really advocating on behalf child but in this picture right here it says that I'm not sure why Mr. Bar Mr. Barth always feels compelled to bring advocates to the IEP meeting you know as 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 a family and as, as a unit together when the children are first starting this process it could be very overwhelming in the family and it's just know that you have the rights to bring an advocate with you to your IEP meetings to gain more clarity and more understanding for so the parts of the IEP is the present level of academic achievement and function performance. So that should, that should be a narrative, including data documenting the child's current level of performance and areas addressed by the IEP. So the, the present level of academic achievement area should be based on individual, on your individual child only. The present level of academic achievement should give a true unbiased picture of the student's strength, improvements, and areas of needs. So it should not be biased. The goals and objectives are what are the things for your child? What are the things your child is worth? Where do the goals come from? Are goals set based on the evaluation report? If a need is, if a need is not addressed in the evaluation, it is not required to be addressed in the IAP. For this reason, a thorough evaluation every three years is essential and required under the idea. idea. So these goals need to be SMART goals. So they need to be specific. What exactly are you trying to achieve? Measurable, how will you know when you achieved it? Action-oriented or attainable, is it something that you have control over? Relevant, how is it applicable? And time-limited, when do you want to achieve your goal? Um, in the IEP, we aim for one year, but we have a maximum at three years. 
The initial assessment and evaluation identifies the strengths, needs, and interests of the person, which is used to create these IEP goals and objectives. There may be a long list of goals to realistically address over the course of one year, so the entire team determines the prioritization of the needs. The team, aligned with family priority, might prioritize goals related to social skill needs over academic needs. These goals should not contain higher expectations than non-disabled peers, and they should be phrased in the following format. Susie will increase slash decrease the behavior or task from present level to desired level and documented how by when. Each objective should be a benchmark in working towards the goal, and they usually have a percentage by them, but it's a red flag if it has 100% by it because no one does anything 100% of the time. The M in SMART goals is for outcome measurements, which is how is, how is success measured? Goals should be clear, clear about when, student, when the student accomplished the goal and how it was demonstrated. And the student and family should understand how their progress is being measured. The student and family input is brought into the outcome measures. So progress is monitored. Progress must be reported as often as general education students get progress updates, report cards, or other progress notices, any other progress progress notices. Most frequent progress updates can be ran into the IEP plan. Um, parents have the right to request more frequent progress updates from their teachers, general teachers, education teachers to see more data and improvements for the child. If the school attempts to deny this request, they need to explain why they have died, deny the request for them to measure the more progress updates. Um, typically, if the progress requests are reasonable, schools will agree to do this within the range. Transportation and the IEP. So for students requiring specialized transportation to and from the school, it must be noted in the IEP. When their schools buses are not specialized, therefore not addressed in the IEP. If a child requires an aid or staff on the regular school bus, it should be put in the IEP plan as well. So then what is extended school year ESY? ESY is not the same as traditional summer school. Some students require an extended school year or services during the summer to maintain performance levels of summer. ESY is about preventing and or reducing backsliding. ESY should be based on measurable data, scores before and after breaks, winter, spring, summer. If the child shows significant re regression in the break, then the team should reevaluate a certain ESY. Parents have the right to see the data used for certain ESY. Schools may not, may not um, like limit ESY services to certain type of disability timing or duration of services in general. Okay, accommodations and modifications. These are tools that children with disabilities receive to enable them to have access to the general education curriculum. All staff who work with a student should know about their accommodations and modifications, including the general education teachers, music teachers, gym and art teachers, and paraprofessional staff. They must relate to the child's disability, be explicitly identified in the IEP, and be re-evaluated each year at the IEP meeting. So the difference between accommodations and modifications. Accommodations are tools that the student can use to level the playing field and give them the same opportunity to be successful as their peers without disabilities. Accommodations do not change the curriculum. It changes the child's learning environment. So some examples would be someone reading a test aloud for them, extended time to complete assignments, written directions for all assignments rather than just verbal ones, and copying of notes. And then modification are things that are changing the curriculum. So examples would be alternate assignments, modified grading, shorter school day, and different curriculum requirements. Things to remember when you have questions about IEP. Review your child's most recent IEP. Things are going well. Would you like to make any changes to the IEP plan in general? Things are not going well. What ideas do you have for improvement to bring to, to, to the administration team, the school, the teachers? Talk to your child. Ask them what they need or what barriers they are facing, what is working for them, what is not working for them in plan. Are there things that your child needs in order to be successful in the school that they currently don't have an IEP plan? Remember, the schools cannot say they will not provide something in IEP because it's too expensive or out of budget. Though they can deny item services because they are not necessary for the family. What happens if we don't agree on IEP? Parent request another meeting after both parties have had time to research options. 
Schools generally want to work with parents to find a solution that meets the child's needs. Parents are comfortable with and it works with them. Welcome to the school. This could take time. This could take multiple meetings. It could be more than one meeting, two meetings. Listen carefully to the school's objections. Objection request them in writing if necessary. Mediation, facilitate IEP meetings, impartial due process hearing. Who can help? Advocacy organization like Art Minnesota's advocacy team, Face Center, Minnesota Disability Law Center, as well as maybe even a private attorney if needed. So there's something called the state foot provision, which is one of the most important legal rights in special education law. The state foot rights apply when you dispute, dispute a change the school wants to make to your child's IEP. When you invoke this right, your child's current placement can remain the same until you and the school resolve the dispute. Yeah. In regard to resources, we have the Art Minnesota website, PACER, as well as Minnesota Department of Education. And then the help desk here at the Art Minnesota, what is the help desk? A help desk is where you call our help desk and our Minnesota staff will answer. They'll talk to you about your situation, goals, options, and way forward. If you're unable to help the situation directly, we will connect with you to one of our trusted partners. You can also submit a request for support on our website with our Ask Advocate form. We use frequently asked questions to quickly find issues on your own. A little bit more about the help desk. I have one of the advocates on the help desk team. We are open from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So we're not weekends. So if you put our help desk call in on a Friday, you will get you will get a response back on Monday, basically, of an advocate trying to sort you out and need the assistance for. So you can connect with us on our general information at arcminnesota.org, phone number right here, as well as our email address, and then as well as our PO box. We are in a statewide organization, but we're not only in St. Paul, so we're all over statewide, southeast, southwest, the state. We have offices everywhere. And then our Facebook, as well as our Twitter. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, we do have a statewide press in the Great Twin Cities website. We also have Facebook groups as well. Mid State website, Facebook group, Southeast website, Facebook group, I mean Southeast Facebook group, as well as that Anchor, Southwest Facebook, and the Facebook group as well for there. That's it. Thank you so much for being able to join our presentation. We look forward to being able to help you with your needs in regards to accommodation for IEPs or any disability. Disability question that you may have any questions or concerns. Yeah. Questions? Um do you mind maybe we'll take the microphone for a question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. The microphone's on. Yes, Hello. 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 Would you be able to help out an educator who is looking to input accommodations and modifications, but maybe not quite sure on the wording or how to implement language? Yeah. yeah, we do have um, advocates we help. I do think we have a specific issues. That's why I can't so, for you, we have a for you to get 